Good Monday morning everybody. I want to give you an update from the live stream where my day was a Sunday the 15th instead of Friday the 13th. As the evening progressed, I found the missing keys. They were, and it was all thanks to Miss Zippo. Um, we were retracing our steps as we spent the weekend together, obviously, and retracing our steps and trying to recall every place we went and every possibility where I would have pulled those out of my pocket. As it turned out, I mentioned to her that Friday before she got here that I had unhooked the trailer because we were taking old Blue over to say hi to Zipper over to um, help move her daughter and she remembered that I moved Mama Sue's 18-foot enclosed trailer which I had forgotten about and it was at that point at about 10:38 last night I had that aha moment where the lights turned on and I said I know exactly where those keys are they are on the bumper of Archie's 2008 GMC Sierra 3500HD so I texted Mama Sue, she's usually up that late, and I went over, and sure enough, sure enough, they were right there with the lock. I had pulled them out, because I have a key here for all the trailer locks, to take the tongue lock off, and set them on the bumper, and that's where they sat. Fortunately, she didn't go anywhere in it. Uh, boy, this thing is dusty dirty, isn't it? Oh, and the refrigerator is uh, doing great. It's making ice. It's doing what it's supposed to do. I apparently did not get the freezer door shut all the way when I filled up, uh, when I took all the ice out and filled up my ice pack uh, for Smoky. So, but anyway, what are we doing here? What is going on here? Quite simply, that belt is going on that deck so that it will replace that belt. And then it's going to get a much needed bath. And then an oil change and I'll lift it up on the front end, clean the broccoli out from underneath the deck and um, do an oil change on it. You guys don't have to bear witness to all of that. It's, it's, not, it's not necessary. Um, but these old Murrays, they don't have the belt numbers on them anywhere. They don't have any anything on them anywhere, which is uh, a par for the course for Murray. They were never known to give you the information that you needed. They expected you to hang on to and keep the owner's manual. Well, that is long gone. So take a look at her now and all of its ugly, dirty, missing plastic nose glory. And then when I turn the camera back on, we'll see what kind of transformation Zippo can do with this thing. So we'll see you guys in a minute. What's in the box? Oh, please tell me what's in the box. I need to know what's in the box. I'll tell you what's in the box. Let's read right here. That's right. Thanks to my buddy, Mr. Tom Dewey, who is a gentleman and a scholar and has helped me out on a number of different occasions. I've got a variable frequency drive for the mill. Also, more notable and newsworthy, the mill is scheduled to be here Wednesday. You guys want to look at this thing real quick? This is going to eliminate the need for the rotary phase converter. I've already had it out of the box and looked at it. Uh, I've got a rather thick owner's manual to read through. I will read through that owner's manual. But now, mind you, this is a used variable frequency drive. I want you to take a look at this used variable frequency drive. Does that look used to you? Pretty simple hookup. Down here, where you hook up your 110. Then up under here and under this cover is where you hook up your three-phase motor and then you have to program it and I'll be going through all the programming steps and all that to get it 
to where it operates the way that I want it to. It'll enable me to leave my mill in low gear in forward and then I can completely control the mill from this panel. Everything. I can increase, decrease the speed once I've programmed it. I can reverse the motor. I can adjust how quickly or slowly the motor ramps up in speed or slows down in speed. I can adjust the frequency. 60 Hertz is standard. Well this will allow me to go all the way down to you know, 0.5 all the way up to I believe it's 240. 240 Hertz. But I will not go up to 240 Hertz there's no way the max I would do is just double the 60 Hertz to 120 um, and if need be I can always change gears on the mill if I need the spindle to go a little bit faster but this is absolute gold uh, like I say it's going to eliminate the need to run the rotary phase converter and it's going to give me all the versatility of the machine's controls without having to manually control the machine with its low, medium, and high range gearing and forward and reverse lever, it can all be done here. So I'm really, really psyched about that. And the condition of it is just phenomenal. I, I even pulled the cover off for the fan, and the fan is attached, so I have to be careful pulling that out. But I pulled it out to check it, and I looked at the fan, and there's the most minute amount of dust on that fan. It, this unit has seen, although used, has seen very little work, or very little use. Just incredible to me. So Tom, buddy, I really, really, you have no idea how much I appreciate uh, you bringing this wonderful piece of technology into my possession. And uh, as I told you, Tom, I will be forwarding uh, information that you gave me to my good buddy Andy, who's also a machinist. And I'm sure that he'll probably take you up on uh, the offer of picking up a frequency drive or two from you. And I will probably also be ordering another one from you. I'm going to show you guys this manual. It's pretty thick but it's it's not it's not overly complicated which is really really nice uh, gives you pretty much everything in layman's terms so should be easy enough to set up but like I said Wednesday is going to be the day that the mill is actually getting moved in so what does that mean that means along with hi guys yeah I'm a little unshaven along with doing repairs uh, this area is going to get cleaned up. All the engines are coming off the paint cabinet, paint cabinets getting moved. I can leave those there for the time being, but I need those two cabinets with the drawers in them to set the lathe on. To set the lathe on. So, like, like. Uh, but these two are getting moved. So, I've not touched or been in either one of these two totes in about three years. So I'm going to go through all those, go through every, everything actually, go through absolutely everything and just start tossing stuff in a trailer and make a trip to the, uh, make a trip to the scrapyard. Um, I'm not huge on scrapping, uh, mainly because a lot of this stuff is valuable. But there is also a lot that's very, very common that is in those two totes that's just going to go away. So. I apologize for turning the camera and you guys might not have heard me as well. I apologize for that. Uh, but it's getting done and it is getting done very soon. Everything on this bench here on this table is what came out of the big bench that was here. And a lot of it also is going to go away. There's a lot of stuff there that I don't need. Um, so there we have it. That rounds out. Just a quick little update, and like I say, Wednesday, pardon me, Wednesday is the day. Uh, today, I will attach onto the end of this video uh, a little bit on the Vanguard, which I'm sitting there staring at, right there. We'll, uh, I'll be getting the diode, the wire diodes in, so I'm going to go through this, uh, inspect the valve guides, 
And just to make sure that it runs good and has good compression, I'm going to go ahead and just tap the valve guide down that is that is walked out just real quick down and dirty so that I can test run the motor and make sure it's going to be worth more than the $20.03 I have already spent for parts. Uh, if it all comes together and it runs out great and it's got good compression on both cylinders, that is going to be a fantastic donor engine for myself or another individual who is in need. And it being a Vanguard commercial, yeah, I'm really digging that I got a hold of this thing. Uh, then we get to the alternator on this. I may go ahead and just, I said that I was probably going to go with an AC. Uh, I know that the flywheel will not be compatible with it. So, rather than pulling this 18 horse out here and pulling the flywheel and alternator out of it to put in this, I do have alternators, AC and DC alternators up here. So I will just simply bunch of them right there. I'll just simply match them up, match it up and replace it uh, when the previous quote unquote mechanic, I use that term very loosely, got into it he fried the coils, fried the wiring, fried and apparently also fried the uh, alternator. So you guys already knew about that. But I'm going to quit babbling for now and like I said, as soon as I get that diode wire in, uh, we will stick that on here. I'll show you guys how it goes on. It's not that difficult. We'll stick that diode on there. Uh, we'll pop the valve cover off and take a look at the valve guides if we need to. We'll drift the valve guide back in. As long as the push rods are okay, I'm not sure if they are or not. If they're not, I do have spares up there in the loft and I can go up and get them. In fact, I think I've also got spares in here, somewhere in that mess. I don't think I would have put them in here. Nope, I didn't. But anyway, all I'm doing right now is babbling, so I'm going to knock it off. We'll get to work on that here in just a little bit. Thanks for putting up with me for the past eight, uh, almost nine minutes. We'll see you guys shortly. That's not it. There we go. Pretty as a shiny new penny. Got her all cleaned up. Boy, it was a dusty mess. Let's see if she's going to start for us. Let's see if the deck engages. There we go. Another happy customer. I got to get this one over to, back over to the pen rods and I'm waiting on a guy to show up about an engine so it'll be a sad moment guys I will tell you all about it after the fact so it's your friendly neighborhood Zippo there's a repair and a clean looks all nice and better than what it did even though it's missing the plastic nose they don't care as long as it mows so it's ready for another few hundred hours <laughs> hopefully that's it friendly neighborhood Zippo please give me one of those we'll see you on the next one Later, I'm out of here. Okay, sorry about the poor lighting. I've got the doors open. But we got our wire. And see, uh, on the new ones, you can see the diodes a lot better than after they get dirty. The two diodes, if you remember, I did this exact same repair on the Simplicity Conquest. But today has gotten away from me for a bunch of different reasons. One of which... I had to rip the heartbeat out of something. Well, I didn't have to, I chose to. I uh, had a gentleman who had a vintage 1986 Snapper uh, front engine rider and he was needing an engine. I have three of the engines that he was needing. So I gave him a choice and he chose the heartbeat that pains me more than either of the other two engines. You can see over here I've got my opposed 18 horsepower out of a Craftsman. And then you can see over here I've got my 18 horsepower opposed that initially came out of Trader that has issues. And then I put my 16 horse that was hopped up into Trader. 
That was the one he decided he wanted. Isn't that sad looking? Doesn't that just break your heart? It pains me to see Trader sitting there without a heartbeat. But Trader's going to have to wait for a little while. I'll try to get her back together before the Portland show. Um, and I also need to get a new tube for this side. It decided it was going to blow the valve stem out. Uh, so, yeah, I sold the engine out of it. And I'm going to get to work on this first thing in the morning. But for right now, I have to concentrate my efforts over here because Wednesday is not going to wait on me. It's going to be here before I know it. And I really, really, really need to get this area cleared out. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I sure hope that I shot these videos in the proper order and that I can stitch them together because I've got two different videos going. And sometimes Zippo gets confused. So fingers crossed. <laughs> I did everything right here. So... Um, all right, I know again a video where absolutely nothing happened at Zippo's except you guys get to see the aftermath of destruction that happens here, uh, and it's okay. It is uh, it's a very good cause for why Trader donated its engine. Uh, a gentleman has a '85 and an '87. Um, it's either '85 or '86, '86, '86 and '87 snappers, and he's building them both back up to give to his children so that they have good dependable uh, mowers on their properties so I'm gonna go into town grab a bite to eat a late lunch it's now 2.30 uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one give me a big old thumbs up I know nothing really got done I bet you guys are just really getting tired of that because I know that I am just every time that it's time to do something I forget to pull the camera out and I do so humbly apologize but all you would have seen was me yanking the engine out of trader and hearing me whimpering and crying as I was doing so all right we'll see you on the next one this is Zippo later I'm out of here